Hey, <clears throat> Shelly back here. My apologies that uh, I didn't realize that my app stops recording after 30 minutes. I guess my phone goes to sleep. And I probably was talking to myself for like the last fucking hour till I realized the goddamn phone wasn't recording me. So my apologies. I have to do a part two on my last show about the death clock. Um... Yeah, I need to play that one back and see where it actually cut off at. But anyway, it's a couple hours later and I'm up now and I feel like doing another show. So let me have my little quick drink of coffee tea here. And let's get on with it. Thanks for watching The Shemmy Show, as always. Um, a couple more topics I want to talk about. I'm always like leaving stuff on my little notepad file that I want to address. I'm still here chilling in Thailand. And let's see here. A big topic that's been on my mind is deleting your pretty much useless family and frenemies. By that, I mean, you got to start editing people, basically start editing people in your contact list. You know, if people are not beneficial to you, if uh, someone looks down upon you, you definitely shouldn't look up to them. That's kind of a bad thing. And just realize that everybody that's listening to this thing right now, this show, you're listening to my voice, you're a mortal being, meaning you going to die, <laughs> okay? So that no one is really above or beneath you, you know what I'm saying? Treat everyone with respect who gives you respect back, but the default role should be to respect people around you. And unfortunately, a lot of people in the world uh, don't offer the same thing in token and in return. A lot of people, self-included, I think pretty much everyone actually grows up in some with some form of abuse, regardless of uh, anything, socioeconomic status, religion, upbringing, uh, race, creed, who the fuck knows. Uh, you're, you're going to, at some point in your life, get abused by somebody who thinks that they're superior to you, right? For whatever reason, you know. And it's up to you whether you choose to listen to them or not listen to them or continue accepting them in your life or rejecting them. And from my experience, okay, you can take my life as an example, basically being 40 years old, semi-retired in Southeast Asia with a couple businesses running on the side, back burner, et cetera, and fairly independent. You know, I've, I've gone my entire life pretty much without working for quote unquote, the white man or anybody else, you know, except for temporary circumstances. I'm pretty much my own independent uh, beta male, <laughs> which I joke about all the time. You know, I say you can't be an alpha male if somebody else controls your money, controls your destiny, tells you when you can wake up, go to the bathroom and shit like that. You know, sell bananas and oranges on the corner if you have to be your own person, I always say. But uh, yeah, Delete your frenemies, your fake ass friends. Uh, so many people, and I'm talking about myself here when I say so many people, <laughs> I have had a lot of people enter and exit my life who haven't been good for me, who haven't had my good at heart. They're just there to ride you out and to uh, just coast. You know, they're, they're, there's a whole genre of people on this planet that just want to use people like like parasites. You're the host and they're the parasite. You're the server, they're the client. In terms of uh, computer hacker piracy shit, you were the seeder, they are the leecher. A leecher is somebody that just downloads all your torrents or your old school Napster style files, but never reciprocates, never re-uploads, you know? It's always a bad thing. Even in the computer digital world, they have what they call a uh, upload ratio kind of thing going on. If you have a bad ratio of sharing, then uh, you're, you're not deemed to be a good person for the network or whatever. You know what I'm saying? There is, there is some level of democracy in all forms of society. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to always, always, always have to be at the bottom rung of everything. Every, everything has some sort of hierarchy to it. But realize at some point in your life, right, you're going to get used and you're going to use some other people. You should do your best to reciprocate when you use other people. When you stop reciprocating, you become what is called entitled and you start feeling that things are owed to you because of reason X, Y, or Z. 
and that's a terrible mindset to have because you know for one you're going to get your ass kicked and two it's like it makes everyone perceive you as holier than thou you know what i'm saying very few of us walking this planet are actual royalty meaning you don't you don't have a kingdom or armies or private military contractors pmcs and shit working for you or whatever you have nothing to enforce your royalty ness right a common thing you used to, that I used to often hear, especially growing up in uh, black communities in Cali, was, you know, a uh, black woman is the queen, so-and-so, kings and we was kings, that quote. <laughs> it's very funny. It's very hilarious, actually, right? Because in order to be a queen, you have to have a king. And in order to be a queen, that means you also have land, resources, gold, armies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, at your disposal. And most people who tout this queen shit don't have it. They mostly don't even have their own goddamn hair sewed on their own head. So it's like, whatever, is what it is. There you go again, Jimmy. Turn it into a racial thing, you know. As I said on my last episode, though, about the death clock, and I will continue that, my favorite, favorite, favorite rapper quote from uh, Dre's Quantic Chronic album is on the first track. G's up, hoes down. If that bitch can't swim, she bound to Drizzown. <laughs> I can't say it like Snoop Dogg did, but you know what my point is, right? In other words, it's sink or swim in life. Everyone's got to support their own weight. You know what I'm saying? If you have problems, you need to address them yourself. If you are sick, overweight, unhealthy, broke, poor, disenfranchised, or just living in a fucked up situation or whatever, that's up to you to solve that problem. It's not on anybody else to partake that problem. And I, you know, in my life, I have often been that guy to try to help people up and out of the mud because I feel bad for them without realizing that they're in the mud and they're fucked up because they've done some fucked up shit or they have a fucked up mindset. And it's like, so often is the case, I extend my hand to these individuals and they end up pulling me down to their level and their problems become mine, okay? You don't want to start letting other people's problems become yours. You don't want to become a burden to anybody else by that token as well, too. It's not a good look, right? G's up, hose down. If that bitch can't swim, meaning you, and bitch can be man or woman, you know, or other in these days, and you know. G's up, hose down. If that lady boy can't swim, she bound to drizz down. So this is this is 2019. You can't be gender specific. Everyone identifies as wherever the fuck they want to be, right? So it doesn't matter. The same logic applies. It applies to dogs, cats, rats, and everything else, right? So yeah, man, if you have people in your life that are fucking leeches, the, probably the best thing you could do for yourself right now, the very best thing is go right now to your phone, email, social media list, wherever you live at, whatever. If you live with these fuckers, definitely get away from them as soon as possible and move by yourself. It's better you be homeless, sleeping in a car, sleeping in a fucking office space, as I've done before, you know, to get away from people who are just like siphoning your mental and physical and whatever spiritual energy if you believe in this kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? If you have toxic people in your bubble or just like living within close proximity to you, let alone under the same fucking roof, you got to get the fuck away from them or your life is going to end up mirroring and reflecting theirs to a degree. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to become a crackhead, you probably shouldn't live in a crack house. You know, <laughs> it's just the way it is. You know, by osmosis, it's going to happen whether you want it to or not, right? So that's one of the first steps there is to, you know, do not be afraid to live in isolation by yourself, right? A lot of people, they, because uh, I'm, I'm in isolation right now, you know, like 90 95% of the time, I'm actually alone and I prefer it that way. I feel safer this way. I feel secure. I feel happy, uh, relaxed. I have time to do what's important to me and I'm on my own schedule without having to worry about am I, you know, stepping on someone else or being intrusive in someone else's uh, space. You know what I'm saying? You have to give up this need for codependency and companionship. That That is the motherfucking Achilles eel Achilles heel, I'm sorry, that keeps people in uh, fucked up situations, fucked up marriages, fucked up families, fucked up relationships and lives, you know? If, if you're living and sharing a living space with someone that truly, truly doesn't care about you or what is important to you, you know what I'm saying? If you're living around these people that are discouraging to you and are always putting you down 
and uh, shit like that. I mean, just get the fuck away from them. Okay, that's just the first step. You know, you, you, if you ever used to watch the old Fox show, TV show, Cops, I don't know if it still comes on or not, I don't watch TV, but I mean, they used to often have uh, the cops would show up to some domestic abuse kind of call or whatever, husband, wife fighting and shit like that. And the first thing they'd say to the couple fighting is, hey, uh, you guys need some time apart. You guys need a divorce. You guys need to break up because, you know, if we got to come back here tonight, you know, there's going to be hell to pay so-and-so, so-and-so, quote-unquote, as they always say, right? Now, I've been, I've been married before. I've been in relationships before, both good and bad and ugly. You know what I'm saying? And I realize that I just thrive more when I'm alone. I can give more of myself to the world and be a better person and a better partner and a better friend and a better everything by just loving myself and taking time to myself and respecting myself enough to not bow down to other people and not feel the need to have some motherfucker always sleeping next to me, holding my hand or being on call, on tap, available. It's like I have this internal validation now or I don't really thirst like, which is a normal human need, by the way, to have companionship or whatever. But when you've had so much fucked up and two-faced and uh, just, you know what I'm saying, narcissistic abuse, conniving motherfuckers that want to manipulate you and fuck your shit up just so that they can have personal gain and use you as a rung on their stepladder to whatever. Yeah, it really fucks up your head, you know what I'm saying? If you get devalued enough to the point where you feel like your life don't matter, yeah, that's really fucking bad, right? Especially when you have it in your heart that you want to sacrifice everything that you've given and worked for time, months, days, years, decades for people that don't give a fuck about you. It's really, really disheartening. It turns a, it turns a motherfucker's world upside down. And I would have to say probably more so men than women. You know what I'm saying? Just, just from my own experience and from what I've witnessed and observed. You know what I'm saying? You almost never, ever hear of girls killing themselves. It's always guys. Why? Because the guy truly believes in the girl. He truly believes in his family. He truly believes in something. And it's like telling him that Santa Claus ain't real after, you know, a very long time. It's, 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 a, tough, it's a tough red pill to swallow, as, as people say. You know what I'm saying? So that's why guys jump off of roofs and hang themselves and shoot themselves in the fucking head and shit. Because they don't want to believe that it can't be true, that it's all a fucking lie. And that people really, really, really don't care. And they want to examine all their past interactions and say like, oh man, this pussy asshole, this bitch really didn't care after all the shit that I did, all the irreplaceable heartbeats I've given, you know, that that's what's disheartening, you know? So, you know, it's another reason why I do this show to hopefully prevent that for some people, you know? So yeah, man, um, there, there's nothing wrong with living alone, nothing wrong with living in isolation, Working in secrecy is the path to success, especially if you have people that are working actively against you, who discourage you, who tell you you should not follow your own dreams, who tell you you should follow this other template that actually don't work because it actually benefits them. Ultimately, you got to realize that people are fucking selfish. I, I would say women more so than men because women all, often view men as utility shovels and providers as as one of these channels uh, uh i play a lot of youtube psychology all day but hey one of my favorites by the way is called liberation why the guy actually uh compares men to shovels in the workforce right i am not one of these individuals that wants to go and join the workforce join the army join the fucking office force all this uh corporate machinery shit just so i can add to the government's tax base to ultimately get fucked over by the same system that I'm paying for, you know, it's like, fuck that shit. I'll, I'll, I'll just make my own and you guys just can pretend I'm not here. Okay. G's up, hose down. If that bitch can't swim, she bound to drizz down or he bound to drizz down. So I'm just looking out for myself. And I basically have to, throughout my entire life, I've had to mute all this noise from people telling me I need to go get a job, get a quote unquote real job and go and finish school and go and do this and be a good provider, quote unquote, and all this and that and the other, you know? And they're talking this shit to a guy who's a fucking ex-millionaire, self-made, before he's 20 years old. Imagine that, right? Imagine a motherfucker that's been broke all their life, working for some invisible system, entity, or government, or boss all their goddamn life, telling a fucking millionaire that they need to go and do it this way. 
You know, you, you can't listen to advice from unsuccessful people and you're going to also be unsuccessful like them, you know, but what it is, it's like when you go ahead and just do shit and shine and just shine on a nigga, as they say, you cause people to self-reflect, especially the ones you grow up upon. You actually force them to self-reflect and force them to look at you and eat their own shit, eat their own words. And that's very uncomfortable to them. I know that the people who I'm talking about who are listening to this show, it probably makes them very uncomfortable, this channel. You know, it makes them very, very hot, hot and bothered to see that I have succeeded despite their shit testing and despite their motherfucking nagging and nagging and just, you know, trying to get me to conform. Fuck you motherfuckers, right? <laughs> I can say that loud from the other side of the fucking, the other hemisphere, right? So it's all good in the hood, you know what I'm saying? You, you have to do what's best for you. And if you're willing to have work ethic and work for yourself and work hard and dedicate yourself for real, you will get results over time. It might take years. It might take decades. It might only take a couple of months. Who knows? But uh, realistically, though, you got to put in that work and have experience and you're going to fail. And when you do fail, these people, these naysayers are going to they're going to, you know, nah, 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 I told you so this and that, this and that. But you got to realize you got to keep trying. You got I often got to try shit two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times before I get it right. But I have the persistence of a motherfucking dope fiend. You know, it's like fucking with me is like fighting a crackhead. It don't matter if you knock me down, nigga. I'm getting up. I'm still getting up and fighting back because I know eventually you're not a you're not a crackhead. And eventually you got to go to sleep. I don't got to sleep. I can work on my shit all night because I love what I do. <laughs> I have while while all these motherfucking haters are tired, burnt out from working their jobs and shit like that, I am steady making progress. I'm steady getting mine while they're sleeping. You know what I'm saying? I am getting ahead because I love what I do and they don't. You know what I'm saying? If you truly love what you do for a living or for the world, you, you know, literally you'd probably do it for free. You have to pretty much do it pro bono, as I've pretty much done for, for most of my life, you know. You're not getting, you know, you work for yourself, you pay yourself pretty much last, you know, and that's got to be okay and acceptable to you. A lot of you guys who are professionals out there, quote unquote, with your four year degrees or whatever, most of you probably wouldn't be teachers or telemarketers or doctors or lawyers or police officers for free, would you? I seriously doubt that. You know what I'm saying? If not, I D double dog dare you to go do it right now. Go do it. Go do. Go and do your job for free for a whole fucking year. If you really love what you do, if you're a school teacher and you really, really love them children, go ahead and teach your job for a whole year pro bono. If you're a police officer, you know, go ahead and go and do your policing and shit for a whole year without any paper. That means you pay for for somehow miraculously you go and sleep in your car and eat fucking cup of noodles or some shit all all your fucking uh, year long and do that for free. That'll prove to me your dedication. And after you've done it for a year, go and do it for 10 years. Then you'll have, then you can prove me wrong and then I'll eat shit and eat my own words. But I know for a fact that most people ain't going to do that, but I fucking will. And that is exactly what I've done in building my businesses. That's what it means to be a webmaster and shoot your own movies and be a producer and this and that and an author and all kinds of fucking serial entrepreneurship things that I do. I do it because I love it. It's my passion. I enjoy it. And I feel the freedom and enjoyment and satisfaction when I do it. Now, of course, I'm doing it for money, of course. But I'm doing it more so for my own independence and because I enjoy what I do. And the money is just an offset of that, actually. So it is what it is. I like, I like delivering good shit to the world. You know what I'm saying? I like helping people and, you know, just sharing my ideas and doing cool shit. It is what it is. Welcome to the fucking Shimmy Show, right? <laughs> so yeah, man. So hey, hold on a second here. I just got to let me have another sip of this coffee BCAA shit here. Ah, fuck, that's some good shit. I gotta remind myself too, by the way, if I if I go over thirty minute mark, to at least tap the screen on my phone so that this show uh, recorder doesn't. Uh, freeze up during a crucial part. I, I felt so dis, I felt so upset, actually, I was going to say disenfranchised. I felt so upset 
when I realized like I was talking for a whole hour just an hour ago and the shit wasn't even recording on my part two of the death clock show. That's the really important show I want to get back to doing actually. But anyway, this is, this is another topic here, right? So, you know, for most of my life being a webmaster, if, if, if you guys go and, uh, Look up my ebook or my old book I wrote. I wrote a book when I was 25 years old, for Christ's sakes, right? When I was up in Canada, after I built a million dollar business, basically, over the course of three years, I made over a million bucks. About my, my yearly income was around 330K or some shit a year for three years straight, from like 97 up to like 2000. All self made, no investors, no shit. I just happened to be in the internet at the right time and I just spammed like a motherfucker and shit. So as a result, I'm rich. I'm a property owner. I got married. Why? Because, well, I'm an attractive person to marry, obviously. <laughs> I have money, cars. I was, a, I was a race car driver, SCCA, NASA, IMSA, many sports car clubs, autocrosser. I had fucking 100 cars. I had lots of shit. Not important, right? But I, I, I had experience from being a self-made man. So I got married, had kids, whatever, all due to me basically having wealth, right? Had I been a typical fucking uh, 19 year old or whatever, I don't think nobody, <laughs> broke ass motherfucker, wouldn't, nobody's trying to marry you, you know, unless you have assets and shit like that and you look like a quote unquote good provider or a sucker. Ain't nobody looking your way. I can prove this. <laughs> so, you know, having money does have its benefits in life. You know, because I had money at a young age, I was able to have children at a young age. I was able to have nice homes and vacations and I was able to travel and, uh, you know, my ex-wife's from Canada and whatever, shit like that. And uh, I was just able to do this because I'm an independent person, right? And I had, I had a typical job. I would have actually still probably been in school at that time had I not done this business, right? You know, my mom wouldn't have grandkids. Dad wouldn't have grandkids and shit like that. So they, despite all this, they still shit on me. For most of my life, just now they're coming out of the woodwork and trying to like flip tables and flip the script like, oh yeah, that's really cool what you do, son, and this and that. Fuck you. You didn't believe in me 20 years ago. <laughs> Why are you trying to be nice about it now? It's amazing how people will try to rewrite the past and never, never fucking reflect on all the times they shit on you and tell you you should quit what you're doing and go do this and get a real job. You know, I never forget that bullshit. So fuck you people, for real. Family, friends, frenemies, and all that shit, you know? I've had people that I thought were lifelong friends still shit on me over this stuff. So as a result, all I have to do is go in my phone, hit delete, block, ban, or whatever, and those people can pretty much eat shit and die, basically. And it takes a lot for me as an empathic individual to cut people off because I love, you know, I love giving people like second chances and whatever. But from my experience, it's like when you give these people second chances, they, they're, they're holding so much resentment and fucking hate in their goddamn hearts. They're just waiting for you to be vulnerable so they can break you down and shit on you once again so they can feel some moniker of power, right? It's really fucking pathetic, actually, right? So, you know, I've learned this lesson more than enough times, right? You can't help people who are fucked up. If people's lives are fucked up, they're fucked up for a reason, and uh, you just pretty much got to let them, like, like, like a fucking plant that's uh, fucking withering or whatever, once it's past a certain point, it, you know, you just call it. It's, it's got to go. You know what I'm saying? If a motherfucker fucking starts having conniption, seizures, passing out, spasming and shit on the floor, heart attack, shit like that, it doesn't matter if the paramedics come and whatever. They usually call it after a certain certain thing. You know, when they'll try to jumpstart you fucking once or twice. But beyond that, they're just, you know, fucking around. You know, the chest compression thing don't help you, right? So you got to learn when to call shit, and I've, I've had to do that, and it's very disheartening, but life is what it is, bro, you know, sis, bro, whatever, and this shit can be cold, it's a cold world, so bundle up, homie, like Lil Wayne says, so yeah, man, uh, don't never forget that your family, for the most part, is probably very overrated, you know, I I grew up in a, in a, um, Raised by pretty much my black side of the family. My Ethiopian side of the family is pretty much very, very fucking distant from me, including my dad. You know, I could have gotten a lot of wisdom and experience, game, whatever, but he failed to give me the instruction manual for some odd reason. I don't know what the fuck his logic is, but I mean, you know, this guy, 
property owner, investor, it's pretty much experienced in a lot of areas in life that I'm just now learning and shit like that. He could have helped me avoid a lot of pitfalls, but he chose not to hold my hand and guide me through this shit as a father should, in my personal opinion, right? I didn't meet my dad till I was 15 years old, and when I did, it's, you know, it's, it's, shit was just kind of ill, you know what I'm saying? So there was never any, in my opinion, there was never enough, I should say, of a, of a, of a reach that a father should give to a son. So me doing these shows here, you know, I'm actually realistically doing these shows, the Shemi show for my own fucking kids or whatever. So my kids don't live with me, but I have contact with them and shit like that. You know, I have to spend a month or two with them per year and shit, but that's not sufficient in my opinion. But it's like, uh, I'm giving them an instruction manual so that when they go out of school into the quote unquote real world, they're not blind and lost and trying to like feel their way in the dark to, you know, figure some, figure out some of the same shit. You know, like I say, this is like a million dollars plus multi-million dollars of game I'm giving away for free here. My experiences, my pain, my this, my lessons that I've learned, you know, excuse me, being that I'm 40 years old now. So family is a motherfucker, man. It's like, uh, man, oh man, what do you do when the people who are pretty much living in your house do not share share or support your same visions or passions or whatever is important to you in life, you know? Now, I guess if you're under 18, you don't have a choice. But if you're over 18, you definitely should move out as soon as fucking possible. Be alone. Be in the smallest, cheapest, shittiest studio apartment trailer live in a fucking van, do what you got to do, nigga. I mean, I've done shit where I've lived in off, I've rented commercial office spaces for a hundred, two hundred dollars a month, 73 square feet, little small fucking size of your probably bathroom or whatever. You know what I'm saying? All I need is a fucking internet connection, hopefully some air conditioning and enough space to put a fucking air mattress in there sometimes or a couch maybe. And I've made it happen, nigga, for real. I got a gym membership, rode a bike to the gym and showered and shaved at the fucking gym. You know, I'll do I'll do whatever, but to make it happen. So a hustle is a hustle is a hustle. A lot of people have shit on me throughout my life for being this type of hustler. You know what I'm saying? And those people right now are still probably stuck in America or Canada doing something that they don't want to do, living a life they don't want to live, living unfulfilled, fat, sick, broke, one foot on a banana peel, one foot on the grave or a prison cell. So that is what happens when you don't have a vision for your future or a plan for yourself. You end up following somebody else's plans or whatever that usually ends up going to fucking nowhere. <laughs> Whereas your boss or bosses or whatever, <laughs> they're on the high horse or you have, you're have you working for some hidden hand or some some anonymous government entity. Or, then, then you're working for quote unquote the white man or the Jews or the niggers or the crackers or the flips or the towel heads or the spicks or whoever. I don't want to exclude anybody, right? But you're working for somebody who doesn't have your best interest at heart, right? And why would you do that? Why would you do that if you were born with the same 30,000 days to live as these other people, right? And if you're 40 years old like me, you have less than 15,000 days to live. That's if you live to age 82, right? Compound that. This is like a tangent off my other death clock show. Do a death clock app if you haven't. Go on Google death clock. You basically type in your fucking uh, date of birth. Uh, do you smoke? Do you Are you overweight? Do you walk? Do you exercise? How old do your parents live? These types of questions. And it'll pretty much calculate whatever your lifespan is, right? And this is independent of your religious, spiritual beliefs and all this and that. It's based on science. And science pretty much is the shit. You know what I'm saying? You cannot will yourself to live longer. You know what I'm saying? It just don't work like that. You know, you're a biological being, a mass of fucking meat on a fucking skeleton walking around that's self-aware. You're not much different than a fucking monkey. I'm a fucking monkey and have enough goddamn sense to know it. You know what I'm saying? I'm an advanced monkey, though. It just knows better. So... Oh my lord, this is some good shit here. By the way, this is uh, I'm doing. I've been doing this intermittent fasting diet for like the last uh, 
two years or whatever straight. And I, I do it like it's my lifestyle. It's not a diet, by the way. I, I, I talk about this so much on my other channels and shows, but I can't help but talk about it because it's basically free. There's no excuse for you guys to not do it and to be healthy. You will live longer and add years to your lifespan. Cut some fat off your body. Put your body in autophagy and start getting some new fucking cells growing and replacing the dead, sickened cells in your body. Eat during a specified window of time period and fast for preferably 14 to 16 hours a day, right? It's almost time for me to eat again, but right now, off hours, I'm having my BCAA powder and coffee, tea, or whatever, and it helps stave off the hunger. And the caffeine helps, too, to help me do shows and do more work and be more productive. So that's what I'm drinking now, if you guys are wondering. Holy shit. Mm, mm, mm. All right, so, so yeah, man, so let me look at my notepad here and see what else I had to talk about on here today. Um, okay, yeah, family, family's overrated, they're going to hold you back. Uh, another thing about family, right, my black side of the family, uh, highly religious, most black American families, they're Baptist, Christian, or mm, some families, maybe Methodist, Lutheran. A A M E quote unquote African Methodist Episcopal. I, I don't know the difference. They all they're they're all niggers with Bibles, okay, <laughs> quote unquote. But uh, you know, my my family's uh, they're from the South or whatever, and they're they're like Southern Baptists. So I went to like Baptist churches growing up, right? And I'm I'm joking about it now, jokingly. But I mean, this shit was drilled in my head. My mama is a hardcore nigga, hardcore religious fanatic. She believes in Jesus motherfucking Christ like she's sitting next to her right now. Okay. It was that fucking serious, right? So I, it's like so serious that I literally have the entire almost book of Psalms memorized in my head. And I don't even want to fucking have it in my head. But it's like, just like my workout routine or whatever. You become an addict. It's possible to become a religious addict and have shit just pummeled in your head day after day as a child, as a child. Like I, I would be reciting Psalms and Bible verses on the way to school in the car with her. It's like I would hear them in my sleep. I can repeat them all to you right now. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. I can give you the Old Testament, fucking King James Version, the Good News Bible Version. Don't fucking test me on biblical knowledge. And I don't even want to know the shit, right? That's what's the trippy part about it. So I basically, my, my point is, right? My point from the Shemmy show is that I was raised and indoctrinated. Listen to me closely, people. In a doomsday religious cult called Baptist Christianity. <laughs> And that's really all that it is. It's a fucking doomsday cult. Everyone preaches the end of the world. All the Abrahamic religions, fucking Christians, Jews, Muslims, etc. The, the, the three majors, as they call them. They all preach of this fiery fucking apocalypse called hell, Armageddon, Judgment Day, Purgatory. It all boils down to some, some motherfucker burning you with fire. <laughs> right? Which I find hilarious. This is no different than the fucking, the Koresh cult or the fucking, uh, I don't know if this includes the Mormons or whatever, but they're, they're Christians to some degree or whatever. Basically, if you have a Bible, Quran, or Torah, or whatever, you be, you're part of a doomsday cult, whether you realize it or not, okay? Now, I do realize that some people need religion as a locus of control in their life. I feel like I can have a very good, strong moral compass of not fucking people over and just treating people as I want to be treated without having a 2,000-year-old religious, so-called religious book or books, you know what I'm saying, to tell me how to live my life or how to dictate whatever and tell me how I'm going to suffer in eternal damnation even after the fact I'm fucking dead and can't feel shit and I'm fertilizing a fucking tree or something in the ground. You know, or I'm ashes or whatever. I don't give a fuck. But it's like, what's up with this doomsday theory of do this, do this, or else you will burn in fire forever? Arr! I'm more concerned with burning in fire while I'm walking the earth, while I can feel shit and have nerve endings, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ever stops to realize or stops to criticize what they believe in. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in some invisible God. 
okay? I don't believe in the mystery God, as Brand Nubian said. You know what I'm saying? Who is that mystery God? Now, I do believe, in my personal opinion, some religious philosophies and doctrines are superior to others because of the way they value life and uh, they, they value moral codes and shit and that. I'm not shitting on every one religion specifically, but I'm just talking about uh, the shit that I was brought up with or the, or the training that was imputed in me that is a very bad training manual. You know what I'm saying? It's like It's almost like I was handed a textbook from the 1950s or something, and now it's like the 2000s, and that old shit is like, it's not applicable. It never really was, but I mean, it's even more so not applicable today, right? So I don't believe in this doomsday shit. You know, whenever people start talking this Jesus Christ, holy, pray to God shit, I'm like, miss me with that bullshit, okay? G's up, hose down. If the bitch can't swim, she bound to drizz down. It's the truth. You can get down on your fucking crusty black knees all you want to and pray all you want to. It ain't gonna fucking help you. It ain't gonna help you lose no weight. I'll tell you that much. You go to a black church to see how many fat black women are up in there. How many of them are on goddamn dialysis machines and going, going right after the service to go get some fast food, Coca-Cola, chicken grease, and pump their veins full of this shit and cut off years off their lifespan after after begging and pleading for their God to go and uh, quote unquote save them. How many of these people go and drink beer and alcohol and smoke cigarettes full of nicotine and shit and uh, just eat bad quality food and you know live and do toxic things that go to these churches or whatever places of worship and shit like that? You know what I'm saying? It really is. It's it's fucking perplexing. I think that your religion or your way, the way that you live your life should, for one, it should help you live a longer life, okay? It should help you live a happier, more fulfilling life. It should definitely not make you a robot that fucking chants and has to recite shit from pages all the goddamn time that from people that you've never ever fucking seen from a part of the world that you never even don't visit and don't want to visit because you're too fucking racist or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, unless you've been to the fucking uh, Persia, Iran, fucking uh, Israel or wherever the fuck these uh, parts of the Bible talk about or whatever, the so-called holy land in the east, until you boarded them flights and shit and been there, I don't even think you should be even following any of these teachings or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You were born in the United States of America. This is the home of pornography, assault rifles. And uh, that, those are the main exports from America. We got, we got assault rifles, ammunition, pornography, uh, Hollywood movies, fast food franchises, McDonald's, Starbucks, etc., Coca-Cola, and all sorts of other toxic shit to pollute the world with, even though USA is only 5% of the world's population, right? That's that's the that's the country that you come from, okay? So don't give me that holy shit, nigga. Please, your religion is the motherfucking golden arches, and you know it. Happy Meal, Super Size, Number One, Jumbo, Big Mac, Whopper, motherfucking Pizza Hut, motherfucker, Dunkin' Donut ass, Police State, Surveillance ass, motherfucking NSA, OJJDPICAC, and Indian Country ass motherfuckers who stole the land from the Indians. That's your country there, nigga. That cross on your chest don't mean shit. And I am shitting on you for that reason. And I'm not, hey, by the way, there is a cross on the flag of Ethiopia, by the way. A lion's, I'm looking at this, uh, the Ethiopian flag. I have one in my living room here, right? It's actually in the background of most of my movies, if you guys notice. These are subtle, these things. It's the Lion of Judah carrying a fucking cross, wearing a fucking hat. A bishop crown with a cross on it, no doubt. Now, I've never seen a lion carrying a cross. I think it's a hilarious actual picture, but it's a flag is a flag or whatever. So, you know, every country's got its own flags. It is what it is. It doesn't mean just because those are my genetic roots, that doesn't mean I have to believe or adopt in it. So, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in Canadian maple leaves. I don't believe in the stars and stripes. I don't really believe in any of the shit at all. You know what I'm saying? But I do believe in my own survival. I believe in being fit. I believe in extending my lifespan and, uh, as they say, doing unto others. Whatever happened to all those religious teachings about do unto others as others, you know, blah, 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 blah. In other words, treat people the way you want to be treated, and you should be all right. At least Buddhists got that halfway correct, right? So 
if you follow a doomsday religious cult and uh, you pray all the goddamn time, you know, what the fuck? So yeah, man, this is this is fucking crazy here. I just had to check my phone. I'm at the 40 minute mark here. Let me. I'm talking too long. The coffee does this to me, right? Holy shit. Hmm. Ah, man. So yeah, man, just learn to think for yourself, you know? Learn to think for yourself and uh, study, man. Study, study yourself so that you understand yourself. Then study other people. Study all the people around you. Study the people you listen to and be careful who you listen to. Be careful what you impute into your brain. You know, I have a lot of people in my family that are news junkies. They watch the goddamn CNN and all this network news all the goddamn day. I actually never turn on my television, by the way. I, I like never. I mean, when I say never, I mean never. Like, I don't watch the shit. I'm not interested in watching someone else's video version of what they want to tell me what happened. I'm not sure if this part even came out in my previous show about the death clock, but realize that I'm, I'm a man that makes movies for a living. I've been doing this for over two decades, 20 years. That means that of all my movies on the internet, all my adult videos or whatever, every single one of them had to pass through my eyes through a video editor at some point to make that MP4, QuickTime, AVI file to upload it. Meaning, when you go and watch the evening news, when you go and watch fucking ABC, Tom Brokaw, or Connie Chung, or whoever the fuck's the newscaster nowadays, I don't keep up on this shit. Actually, I take that back. There, there was one Cuban news girl I thought was kind of cute a long time ago. If she's still on CNN, Robin Mead, is she still on there? I don't know. I liked watching her back in the day. But anyway, <laughs> um, every single news report, news clip, whether it's the Weather Channel, the News Channel, whatever, it's nothing but a video file. It's not really happening right now unless you're watching a security camera feed that's live. So that means that the evening news is a movie. It's just an MP4 file. Some nigga just like me had to sit at a desk and run Adobe Premiere, Sony Vegas, and make that news footage, that news clip about whatever happened in your neighborhood or whatever or something today. But that's that one person, that editor's version of whatever happened. That's why I don't watch the news because I'm watching an edited version of reality. I don't want someone else's edited version of reality or opinions to sway or affect me. I'd much rather read or witness for myself what's going on or choose what I choose what is important to what's going on. There's always shit happening in real time. Life is a real live stream. Okay, as I'm doing this show right now, motherfuckers are getting killed, motherfuckers are getting ripped off, babies are being born, airplanes are crashing, motherfuckers are drowning, good shit is happening, people are winning the lottery, all this just happened in the last five seconds as I'm doing this show right now, right? But if you turn on the news, you don't know that. You only know what they want to show you. <laughs> that is the danger. That is the fucking danger of living your life and being a news junkie. You're always going to be perpetrated and bombarded with, for one, fear, racism, apocalypse, doomsday, and consumerism. Meaning everything is probably geared for you to go and buy more fucking pharmaceutical drugs, more fast food, more pizza, more this, more that. And they're going to sell you whatever or pitch you whatever pretty much so they can get in your goddamn pockets. What the actual fuck? You know, you're better off just buying my own goddamn movies from me. At least I'm telling you what, what you need. I'm not trying to sell you no goddamn McDonald's or nothing. You, you, you buy a movie from Shemi Productions, you're getting the fucking movie. It's me and the bitch. And that's what it is. <laughs> there's, there's no ulterior motive or brainwashing or anything going on. But you can't say that for any show. You know what I'm saying? It's like when I was a kid, and I'm still kind of a kid myself by heart, but it's like uh, when I would watch like uh, cartoons after school or Saturday morning cartoons, there would be like a... Um, a motherfucking, uh, say I'm watching fucking uh, Transformers G.I. Joe or some shit as a kid, right? Okay, you, you get a 20-minute show and 10 or 11 minutes of commercials. And it would feel like 
the fucking on the thing on the on the kids cartoon the gi joe cartoon was basically a 20 minute toy commercial right so you're watching the gi joe cartoon and you know gi joe versus cobra whatever you you see all the fucking cool airplanes and toys and tanks and shit they have and what do you know during the commercial break you're going to get a commercial from hasbro toys because they want to sell you that aircraft carrier fucking uh G.I. Joe man, good guy, bad guy, Ninja Turtles, you name it. They want to sell you these fucking toys. So it's like the show and the toy are linked together. You understand what I'm getting at? The evening news is no different. Movies are no different. They're all trying to sell you shit, additional shit in addition to the program. You're not getting a pure, unfiltered, just show. You feel me? That's crazy, man. I mean, it, it's slick, slick as shit marketing, but that's why most Americans or whatever stay fucking broke. You know, you're being so, you, you just want to go and find out what's going on in your neighborhood, okay? But they're trying to sell you Lexuses, Mercedes Benz, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, and some kind of like drugs to help you sleep better, not have fucking chronic pulmonary emphysema, this, that, and the other, or whatever. And it's all counterproductive. It all takes away your money. It takes away your health, takes away hours, days, years from your lifespan, right? You go and buy my goddamn movies, you, you could watch them and be like, hey, that was a good fucking movie. Or if you were the kind of guy who likes to jack off the videos, hey, you can go jack off while I watch this. Yeah, whatever. It's entertainment. But believe me, I, I'm not, it is uncut, pure entertainment, nigga. I'm not, I don't have no... No, no fucking uh, ulterior motives is what I'm saying. Now, I could be like these other fuckers and do all this subliminal shit to try to sell you shit, but I ain't going that route. Give a fuck. There's enough of that shit. I'm, I'm not going to advocate something that I don't believe in. I'm not going to go and go this ultra consumerism route. Like once you bought my movie, I am not trying to upsell you my books and this and that and come to my podcast and come to here and send me this money and donate to save the fucking starving Africans and feed the whales and all this shit. What the actual fuck? Yeah, I'm not, I respect people's time enough to not go and do that because I don't like it being done to myself. But on a, on a big scale here, that's basically what mass media is doing, you know? They're, they're pumping fear into the masses. You know, you, you go and talk to the older generation of people, my parents, whatever. Now, I've even heard this quote from some of the Africans in my family, the African side. I had, I had one guy, an uncle, tell me, all these children now with, in his African accent, all these children now with these, they are all gangsters, and this and that. And I'm like, I, I said to him, what? The children are gangsters. They're all gangsters, quote unquote. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? What? I'm a fucking nerd. What are you What are you blabbing about, nigga? But that's just the fear that they get from the news. All you're going to get is the worst of the worst of the worst, right? If, if your skin is black, especially, oh, black man's a criminal. Black man's a sex offender. Black man did this. Every time you turn on the news, black man, crime, crime, criminal, this, that. So we're just, I've got the perception of being an athlete, entertainer, or fucking criminal, or whatever, which is fucking ridiculous, right? I'm a goddamn nerd that likes to run and swim and pretty much be left the fuck alone otherwise, right? But these are the perceptions we have to work against, you know? White people have got their own stereotypes too. As you guys may know, not all white people are rich. Most are not. <laughs> In fact, most are hooked on fucking opioids and are doing quite poorly in my community, right? So, so I mean, there's a whole lot of stereotypes and perceptions that people get just from watching this goddamn idiot box called the fucking television. You have to take control of your mind and be careful of what you impute it in there, right? This is far more important than your religious upbringing and this and that, because what, what are you spending your brain time on, your screen time? It should be with people that you care about, really. You know, you shouldn't have your head buried in a book all the goddamn time or your eyes glued to a screen or a phone or something. You should be live in the flesh with people that you fucking care about. You know what I'm saying? That's why I love going to massages so often. You know, I love I love spending time with girls that reciprocate their care and love and shit with me. I love spending time with friends that fucking actually, actually care fucking about me that don't want shit from me other than to spend time with me which is very fucking rare 
You know, there's so many people in the world that just want to try to use their social fucking relationships to manipulate themselves into better positions in the world. You know, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Why don't you just wake up early or not sleep and work your fucking ass off and you'll have more shit than you can fucking shake a stick at. And why do you even want this shit? It's like, again, I come from the frame that I was a young millionaire. I've had all this shit before. I've had the BMWs and race cars and houses and this and that. And I've traveled here and there and lived here and there. I've done it. I've done more shit than most people probably would do in four or five of their pathetic fucking lifetimes as a wage clock punching goddamn slave. So I know the difference. The material shit doesn't matter. Everything that you have now, everything that you own now, nigga, in 10 years, it's going to be obsolete. Your flat screen TV is obsolete in 10 years. It's going to be on the fucking garbage can on the street. You're going you're gonna to be trampling over them. All your cell phones and gadgets and cars and shit that you cherish, you know, all your goddamn brand name designer shit ain't going to be worth shit in 10 years. Everything's just fucking... There's going to be some new shit out, nigga. I, can't, I don't even know what's on the horizon, but, you know, it looks like all this AI VR shit is just taking shit over by storm. So it's like things are going the world is going to be a very, very different place in a decade from now. The only thing that you can really do to secure yourself is really buy some land and buy some property because that shit ain't going to get no fucking cheaper. You know, one of the reasons I got this condo place here now is fucking because the one I wanted to buy got more expensive. Keeps getting, I'm like, God damn, I better buy it now because the price is going up. Money's getting worse, less, this and that and the other. So unless you're buying a house or some land or some real estate, you know, <laughs> that's about the only thing that's going to hold its value. Concrete, concrete and land and don't buy it on no goddamn sand. So again, G's up, hoes down. That bitch can't swim, she bound to drizz down. <laughs> I'm going to get back to my other episode about the fucking, um, do I have time? What, how long are we at? I'm at the 51 minute mark. Fuck it. I might as well go for the gusto here. Let me hit my screen for a second so my phone doesn't sleep. All right, cool. 52 minute mark here. All right. So my la- my last show was 30 minutes long. I talked about the death clock or whatever. If you haven't done so already, I'm going to try to conclude this show and nip it in the bud here. If you haven't done so already, go on Google or something, or your favorite search engine, not to fucking uh, give Google the monopoly, and type in death clock. A death clock is basically, like I said, enter your birthday, enter your age, uh, gender, weight, height, uh, how long your parents lived, if they're still living, that's a great thing. Uh, Do you have any pre-existing conditions? I don't think they ask that many things or whatever, but they they ask you basic, it's a very basic like 10 question thing, like... uh, do you smoke? Uh, are you overweight? Do you drive or walk? How far do you walk every day? If so, uh, do you exercise or how many minutes or hours do you spend exercising per day or week? And they just ask you these like qualifying kind of questions, almost like as if they were doing a life insurance policy on you, right? So in, in doing this, as I said in the previous show, uh, I, I, I did the death clock calculator at the particular time over a decade ago, and I googled when buying a life insurance policy, what's the average life expectancy for black men in America? And the answer was 55 years old on Google. And this factored in all types of things, diseases, homicide rate, high blood pressure, all these factors and this and that or whatever. And I was like, fuck that. I just no way, no way in the fuck. I'm, I got to go way past 55. I got shit to do and things. To, I, that, that's unacceptable for me, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I realized this a long time ago, over a decade ago, right? But as I said in my previous episode, if it didn't get cut off at the particular time, uh, John Singleton, the director of Boys in the Hood, he just died at age 51. People like Michael Jackson die at age 50, this and that and the other. I was like, God damn, black man got a short lifespan. So um, that's not going to fly. Fuck that shit. So I'm in shape. I'm in very good shape now. Um, again, I'm half black, half Ethiopian. I'm a long distance runner by trade been running every day of my life pretty much ever since I was 15, except for when I got married. I cut that shit out and got fat, ballooned to 300 pounds. The black side of me came out, I guess. (laughs) But now I'm back to being myself, right? So I am doing shit to extend my lifespan. All of my vitamins, dieting, exercise, whatever. There's, There's a lot of reasons I do it, but the primary reason is that I can live longer and walk the earth or roam the earth longer and enjoy my life. And 
all that I have worked for and whatever. I'll probably have more kids too, actually, and shit like that. So there's a multitude of reasons to live long. Like I say, every decade the world changes, people change and shit, and I want to be around to see and witness these things. And if you're in bad health, my nigga, you, you just ain't going to be here. So why would you want to go through life with an overweight or unhealthy body or an unhealthy heart or unhealthy immune system? And by the way, you can strengthen your immune system by traveling the world to different countries and fucking other people outside of your race. You know, black people are fucking hard-headed. There's so many goddamn stupid niggers on the black side of my family. They're like, oh, man, black woman's the queen. I don't date outside my race, this and that. I was brought up in a fucking household like this, and I, I hate that teaching. It's very ignorant, you know what I'm saying? Black people, black women are 5% of uh, the U.S. population. And America is only 5% of the world's population. You think that I'm going to delegate myself to 0.5% or 1% of the world's women? You motherfuckers are crazy, right? But I'll tell you the other flip side of that. If you are one of these people that wants to retain and stick inside your race, it is no surprise to me that you're going to get sick more often. You know what I'm saying? In other words, as soon as a motherfucker from Lithuania coughs on you, you're going to get sick beyond immeasurable degrees because your immune system has not been around them enough to tolerate their genome, right? Now, if you guys look at my fucking video channel, uh, any of them, just Google me or whatever. My slogan lately has been, I fuck Dominicans, Jews, Navajos, Sioux, and Filipinas, too. <laughs> kind of rhymes. I'm kind of a little bit of a little bit of a minor rapper, right? But my, my point is I have a very strong immune system because I fuck with chicks from all over the world, from pretty much... I've, I've had them all, basically. It doesn't matter. Pretty much from every fucking continent. I actually, I have, I've yet to fuck a girl from Australia, uh, but uh, or Antarctica. Canada's pretty close. Um, what the fuck? Hold on one minute, people. I got a phone call coming in here. Hello. Sawadika, how are you? I'm fine, I'm on cable TV. Yes, how are you? Okay. Uh, someone add Luke or not? Uh, the technician come yeah. to see if they have ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I am I I am home. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Okay, bye. Ka. Thank you. Good day. Okay. Hello. Oh Jesus Christ! I hope that wasn't recording. That I had a phone call coming, and I. I have one of my uh, fucking home internet technicians coming here to fuck with the modem or whatever. So anyway, I got to wrap this up. The guy's on the way here in 10 minutes or so. I hope I was able to conclude this show. It's about at the one hour mark. But again, uh, I'll, I'll continue this later. By the way, this, uh, I'm Shemmy, by the way. This is the Shemmy Show. Look me up on the uh Like, join, subscribe if you care. Buy my movies. I want your money, honey. I got movies, books, ebooks, all that shit. That is my only pitch I have to you guys. I'm not trying to sell y'all anything else. This is my life, and I'm just putting myself out there and uh, telling a story. So please leave your comments below. Leave your hate below. Leave your uh, praises below. And uh, holler at me. Get at me. If you got some projects you want to talk to me about, always hiring models, et cetera, et cetera, hit me up. I'm always uh, got my ears and eyes open for new opportunities and like to meet new people that are like-minded. And if you don't like me, fuck off. Eat shit and die, niggers. Ha ha. This is the Shimmy Show. I'm Shimmy and I approve this message. Peace and hair grease. I am out of here. Ciao.